Helios. You've heard of Helios, right? If you've been into vintage lenses, manual focus lenses, you've probably heard of Helios, one of the uh, more famous Soviet um, produced lenses. Uh, well, we're going to talk about this, and it's not just the lens itself, Helios, but the fact that uh, there's quite a bit of oil on these uh, aperture blades. You probably can't see them from here or on the, the back side. They've got oil on both sides. Well, I'm going to show you how to remove that oil. So let's get at it. Here I am, Vietnam. Green is always coming down. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. All right, here we are this week um, coming to you, as usual, from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Uh, Modesty Photography sponsoring this. Uh, you know, what, what we're looking at this week, you know, I, you know, I've gone through a few different things in the last few weeks here and there. Uh, but this, again, is kind of a mix between um, talking about our famous Helios 44-2. Uh, which there's millions of these things around the world that are produced by a bunch of different factories in the Soviet Union um, all the way up to 1990. Well, you can hear my son Dylan outside wanting to come in. He always enjoys these videos as well, but not today. Uh, but besides the lens itself, what I'm going to be uh, actually focusing on is the oily aperture blades. And you can't see it from there, but um, you know, here's a picture. And on the back side, you know, for a lot of people, they don't really care about oil on their blades, but I don't care. You know, there's the possibility that light will get bounced around inside your uh, inside your barrel if the oil is uh, shiny enough to reflect that light. Um, so why not just clean it off? You know, again, this is a uh, this is a lens, you know, average fifty dollars. You know, you're not uh, risking thousands of dollars like you would on, uh, let's say, my Leica Sumalux over here. You know, I wouldn't do the same thing. Uh, you know, it's a six thousand dollar lens. This is a fifty dollar lens. So you could take it apart yourself. Use a little uh, use a little lighter fluid here to. Uh, Dissolve basically that oil, you know, lighter fluid is great for getting uh, getting oil and things off. We'll be using uh, be using a little art brush, you know, to get the get the uh, lighter fluid on. Be using my uh, lens wrench to take this baby apart, and it's it, it really is that easy. And I'll show you in a second how how to go about doing that. But a little quickie little uh, history about this particular one itself. Um, you know, based on the uh, serial number, it was produced in 1988, so it definitely is not an early version. Um, but it was produced, and you can tell by the, the logo on the, um, on the faceplate. Uh, the logo is from Valdai uh, Factory, who was one of the original uh, producers of the, uh, of the Helios in, back in 1958. Um, you know, the more famous one, of course, is KMZ, which is uh, Krasnogorsk, Nagorsk, Krasnogorsk, uh, Mechanical Works, KMZ, uh, in Russian, of course. And, um, you know, but Valdai is actually one of a handful of uh, producers of this lens, and they all produce them for the Zenit um, camera system they started off with an l39 mount and uh you know it was copied copied from uh leica's mount back in the day and uh ended up with an m42 which is what this one is and um you know this whole design is a copy anyway of uh carl zeiss uh Yenna factory they were producing um the biotar um you know for years and then of course at the end of the war, the Soviets captured and took possession of that part of Germany where, uh, where the Yenna factory was located. So therefore, they borrowed the, uh, the design and the equipment and everything else, took it back to the, uh, back to the homeland. The 
and started producing these bad babies here. And because there's millions of them out there and there's, you know, four or five or six different producers of these things, um, there's a lot of quality differences between them all. I haven't tested them all. I only have one. That's all I need. Um, even though they're cheap enough, I could probably buy a handful of them and, and test them out, but eh, it's not that important to me. Um, because I do have the original Biotar itself. Uh, so this is just a, a cheapy copy version. But what this is famous for is its swirly effect um, under the right conditions, of course. The right distance between the subject and the lens and the background from the subject. But anyway, it's a design um, produced, you know, by Carl Zeiss um, company um, by an engineer named uh, Dr. Uh, Merte. And this was in 1936 that design was originally uh, produced. And it is six elements in four groups. Um, there's eight aperture blades in here. It's close focus distance is a half a meter or 50 centimeters. Um, it's 230 grams or about eight ounces. And uh, as I said, it's, it's economical and uh, it's a fun lens, you know. Um, a lot of the cool hipsters out there like to like to use these because uh, I mean, you know, some of the cool effects that are produced by you know the lens again under under the right conditions. But um, anyway, so it was uh, produced from 1958 all the way to 1990, and this is uh, two years before its final demise. And as I said, it was uh, you can tell by the little logo here with the arrow circle um, through the lenses. And uh, that's from that's Valdez uh, logo. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to take it apart, show you how to clean the aperture blades, and uh, get this baby back into pristine condition again. So let's move over to the table and uh, get at it. So here we are over by the table. I'm going to show you uh, taking apart the uh, um, Helios 44-2. It's not that difficult, but you need obviously a few things to go along with it uh, or to make this happen. I'm sure there's various other ways you could probably do it. You could probably even use your fingernails if you got some pretty tough fingernails, but, um, but I would get a uh, a lens spanner wrench or a repair tool or you know, what do you call these things uh but you get these on on ebay you can get them on amazon you know I'm, I'm living in asia so over here i get them on lazada or tiki or any any of those online sites over here um they come with various tips um they look like a, a flathead um you know, flathead screwdriver, they come with points, you know, there's various ones because obviously other uh, lenses have different uh, different ways to take them apart. So what I'm going to show you to do is, is take it apart with this thing. We need to take all the, all the glass out of here because we're, you know, we're going to soak some lighter fluid, which is another thing we need. We need, uh, and of course I got Zippo uh, lighter fluid, but I'm sure any lighter fluid will do. Um, You'll need a, uh, a paintbrush or something to be able to dab the uh, uh, the lighter fluid onto the uh, onto the aperture blades. Uh, you'll need some cotton buds or Q-tips if you want to go by name brand. Um, you know to be soaking up the uh, residue lighter fluid. Uh, I mean it'll evaporate away by itself, but you know obviously you want to get off the oil that it's uh, that it's releasing. So, um, the other thing is, uh, some gloves because you probably don't want to be, uh, don't want to be handling your, your glass with your bare fingers because the oils from your fingers will get onto the glass then. And now you'll need to clean your glass as well as your, as your, uh, lens here. So, uh, so let me do that. Let me put, put my, put my gloves on. That's uh, with Dr. Scott. I'm going to do some surgery here. Uh, you're probably here outside my, uh, outside my office here. Uh, my 11 month old son has discovered a 
container with something in it. Um, and so you'll hear that shaking noise, I'm sure, um, in that regard. Way to go! I broke my <laughs> broke my broke my glove. Well, like I said, I don't need the I need, I need the palm anyway. So as long as I've got the fingers in place, it's good enough. All right, so let's uh, get going on that. First thing you want to do is remove the caps. Uh, so the top cap. This is the M42 mount. So I'm unscrewing that. Now the original one of these was a L39 mount. It was a uh, Leica uh, thread mount, but this one this one's an M42. So we're, uh, we're gonna go, go uh, with that. Not that there's any option to go with that, it's an M42. <laughs> so, um, first things first, wanna take off the front element. Inside we have, uh, we have uh, the nameplate, which says Helios-44-2, uh, uh, it says 2-58, Dash 58, which means 58 millimeter F2, and then it has the uh, logo for the uh, Valdai uh, factory. So on any nameplate, you'll see uh, they either have uh, divots, uh, which I, as I said, it would, you, you would need the pointed end of, uh, end of the tool, but these ones have, uh, have little cuts in them. So therefore, um, therefore the, uh, uh, you know what I call these, the flat head, uh, would fit right in with a uh, fit right in there. So let me line these up and obviously you, you want to be careful because you don't want to be damaging the glass. So once you have them slotted in here, uh, let me get them, get them to seat properly in here. One on one side, one on the other, and then you can begin to turn and they basically just unscrew. And then once you've unscrewed it loose enough, uh, you could probably do the rest by hand. And actually this one pops right up. So there's the, there's the nameplate. So we get that out. Now what I do is I, um, um, I put them uh, in order uh, as, I've, as I've removed them so that I can just go over to reverse order uh, putting them Putting them back in place this way. Basically pop, that pops right out here. So that is the front element. And you know, the, the way the glass is made too, uh, it's a spherical, um, you know, piece of glass. So it's rounded on one side and uh, concave on the other. So of course you want to put them back in when you install them back the same way you got them out. So um, I do that exactly um, as I just mentioned. I put them in order that they came out, but I also put them in direction that they're that they need to be put back in. So that again, you don't want to put a backwards uh, element in place. There. Uh, the next one's another retaining plate, and again, it, it just screws in, so you can use your fingers with this one. It's on the inside. It's another retaining ring. Um, same thing. You know, um, seeing this, seeing this up close, um, on here you have, uh, and of course it's not focusing properly. You have a, um, on this point, yeah, there we go. You have a uh, lip, as you can see, you know, of course it's round, but it has, uh, it has a lip right at the very top up here, comes around. So that actually goes in this direction. So same as, same as, uh, same as the retaining ring or the face plate, uh, front element element, and then the ring go in that way. So narrow end goes in first, same as I did with, uh, with the front plate, this next lens, which is the last piece of glass before we get to the, uh, to the aperture, uh, aperture blades, um, just comes out the same way as that. So, that's why the Helios is kind of easy to work on. There's, you know, uh, it's not that complex to, to take it apart, but you just need to pop it out basically. Sometimes it needs <laughs> a little loving care to get out.
Wow, that one doesn't seem to want to come out very well. Maybe it's the vacuum. Let me take the, the back element off first and let me see if that, if that helps since we have to take that off anyway. So uh, I need to adjust my tool since um, the back element is smaller than the front. Get that in place here. Line up the two slots. All right, good, that lines up right there. So let me tighten that. All right. Again, one slot on one side, one on the other. And just like a, any screw mount, you basically just unscrew it. Although it's can be a challenge to keep them within the slot. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, there we go. Once you loosen it, once you loosen it, you can do it by do it by hand. It's a lot faster and safer. Obviously, your gloved finger is not going to scratch that back element. All right. So we take out the take out the back retainer ring, uh, it's a screw ring, and I put that down the bottom because that's the, the last thing that's gonna go in reverse order this way. Same thing, pop out that, uh, pop out that uh, bottom element. And again, concave goes outward. So think of the, uh, think of the uh, aperture blades as the center. Everything goes outwards this way and everything goes outwards that way. So it's, you know, uh, going reverse order. All right, so we got that one out. Another retaining ring uh, in here. Again, same thing, screws in, screws out. Uh, unscrew it with your fingers. All right, you hear my wife. Oops. So we got the retaining ring and the glass come out at the same time. And uh, so again, retaining ring goes in order after that here. And then the, uh, again, the glass goes concave toward the, uh, toward the aperture blade on this side. So there we have uh, the bottom elements. So the four bottom on this side, and now we have that one piece of glass on that side, which doesn't seem to want to pop out there. So let me give it a helping hand with my finger from the bottom. There we go. It pops out, pops out here. Uh, that was pretty tight. So now I have, now I have a barrel with no glass in it. So uh, again, this is the top four pieces and the bottom four pieces so we can think of it that way so um we'll think of this as that's the aperture blade you know this line this line that i put right here this is the aperture blade and i move things up a little bit so you can see see the uh the bottom uh bottom piece so we have a uh, retaining ring, we have the rear element, we have retaining ring, we have the middle bottom element, we have the top middle element, retaining ring, front plate, or front uh, element, and then uh, the face plate here. So that's the order, the order that, they, uh, that they will go in. All right, so now comes the uh, now comes the fun part, which is cleaning the uh, cleaning the oil. Um, I don't know if I can catch that catch that in the light, uh, but as you can see, you know, open, close. You can see the uh, the shiny parts on the blade there. That's oil. You know, we want to get that off. Same with the you know the bottom bottom uh, uh, blades as well. You see how oily they are. We want to get that off. We don't want that on there. So what I'm going to do now is apply the, uh, apply the lighter fluid. So I'm going to add that into uh, just any, really any container. So I just use an old cap, uh, bottom, 
uh, bottom cap or something. Don't know where it went to, but we'll add that in there anyway. And use my use my paintbrush for the application of it. Uh, you don't need you don't need a ton. I mean, lighter fluid is uh, you know lighter fluid is uh, is a liquid, and you can you know soak it up with the uh, soak it up with the paintbrush. Now, when you apply it, you also want to go uh, counter uh, counterclockwise because you don't want to go against the blades. You don't want to. Uh, you know, these blades are pretty sensitive, so that's what you want to do. Actually, I need some more. Uh, lighter fluid tends to also evaporate relatively quickly, so, uh, so we need kind of a lot of it. There you go. Got a, a little pooling of uh, lighter fluid. Uh, you also don't want to go breathing too much of this in. You know, it's not exactly ideal for... Ideal for your lungs. Uh, so again, apply, apply, apply. Uh, go counterclockwise or anticlockwise for those who say it that way. Basically going the opposite direction that your clock turns for those who use analog clocks with the hands that actually turn. Uh, well, Soak as much as you can in there because the uh, the lighter fluid is going to break down, break down that oil. Spread it around, back and forth, get it all kind of distributed as, as best as you can. Uh, and just keep going. You can never put too much because it's, you know, again, it evaporates, it evaporates on its own anyway. But um, that oil needs all the help it can, can all it can to, to break down. So. Don't be shy about uh, the application of the oil or of the uh, lighter fluid. Just soak it, soak it away. That's why I say opening, opening and closing, you know, also pulls more oil from where it was coming from so you can help break more of it down as it, as it, as it shows up kind of thing. So I'm going to stop there just to see how, how we're doing. Now you use a, a Q-tip or a, a cotton bud, as they call them, to now go around and try and soak up that. Now remember, again, go anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, trying to soak up as much of, of that oil as possible in that regard. Why my son is really having a field day out there, isn't he? He's uh, 11 months old. He's got a couple new teeth coming in, so he's not a he's not a very happy camper. At this time, so you know, my poor wife has to <laughs> deal with him. Uh, so as you can see, the uh, I don't know if you can actually make that out or not. But, uh, you know, the end of that cotton bud is kind of dark, so it's, it's doing its thing. It's soaking up that, soaking up that oil. Now I will go from one side to the other. Actually, let me loosen up that, that cotton just a tad so it's not so stiff and make it a little more absorbent. There we go. soak up that oil and of course uh, depending on how much oil you have to which unfortunately my copy is quite oily so it's probably going to take several applications uh, several applications to get through this not very exciting is it it's like watching paint dry so I'm probably just to speed up the situation, I'm not going to have you sit through watching 
watching this because as I said, there's a lot of oil on here, so I'm gonna have to go do this probably 10 times. No, that's just a rough guesstimate, but I'm gonna do as many times as it takes to clean it anyway. So, uh, so that's that. I mean, of course, another way I could do this is take the whole assembly out and go blade by blade, take it all apart and back together, but I'd rather not. Um, you know, so I'm gonna do it kind of the easier way, if you wanna call it the easier way. And uh, as I say, go blade, blade by blade around, uh, giving it a scrub with this, and then I have to give it some more lighter fluid to, again, loosen up that oil. As you can see, again, you know, the cotton bud's getting getting full. So, all right, so let me take a pause and I'll go to do this a bunch of times and then come back and show you the uh, finished product. I'm not gonna do anything different, so don't think you're missing out on anything. We're just gonna do the same thing, but a repeated number of times. So stay tuned and I'll be back in a second. Make sure to make sure to put on fresh gloves after you finish cleaning cleaning your lens with chemicals uh, because you don't want those chemicals uh, transferred onto onto your uh, onto your rubber. All right, get that on. Of course, damn rubber gloves are not easy to get on, especially once your hands are a little sweaty from wearing the first ones. So. Give me a second, stay tuned. Do, 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 do. Need a little Jeopardy music on the side. So I'm not gonna put them on all the way because I don't need them on all the way. All right, next one. Get my left hand on here. Do, 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 do. We'll try not to, not to rip them this time. You know, these things are really cheap. I mean, you can get a box of these things for you know, really a few bucks. No big, no big deal. Uh, get the fingers in place. There we go. So, nothing more valuable to your clean lenses than uh, clean gloves. So let me re-polish this lens again. Get it back to uh, pristine condition. Kind of light. Yeah, looks good. All right. So back to what I was talking about, inserting from one direction. You know, again, I like to put my finger through just to guide it in place. Uh, look through the light again. Yeah, everything looks, looks good there. Now let me put the retainer ring. Remember coming, we're in reverse order because the aperture is here. Um, always goes in, always give, goes in um, short end first. And in that case, uh, we have that in place. Good, so now we have lens, retaining ring. Now the next lens is gonna go in, so again, we wanna polish that. This is your rear element. Uh, very important element here. Make sure that's clean. Hold it up to the light. Oh, nice and sparkly clean. Good, now we wanna drop that in, same thing. Um, the uh, spherical end goes in first, so the round end. Concave end is out. Uh, so we want to drop that in place. Make sure it's seated. Seated snugly. And then lastly is our retainer ring. The little ring that screws in, screws in on top. So same thing, you can get the threads going by hand and then tighten it with the tool. Tighten it with the tool when you get to that uh, get to that point. Right, use my fingernail. Ah, get it tight in that regard. All right, a little check through the light, make sure yeah, we're looking okay there. All right, good. Little quickie little polish. All right, that looks okay. Okay, now for the uh, front elements. And again, the, we go from now from the center up. And again, we go with the, uh, the rounded end, or the spherical end uh, goes in first. 
Oh, sorry, no, that's going from the bottom up. The uh, concave end goes in first, so the spherical end is facing up towards the uh, top of the lens. All right, so we have that in place here. Um, again, it sits in. Make sure you use your... That's why you need gloves on, because you need to be pushing the lens to uh, get it to seat snugly. Because if it's off center or anything, it's not going to... Your, your images are going to look a little wacky. So we have that in place. Now we have the retainer ring. Remember the, uh, the uh, smaller end goes in first and the, the end with the lip goes on top. So again, drop that in. Uh, in place so it is just a retainer ring there's no screwing or anything in that regard so now we have the front element give that a polish uh, make sure it's all sparkly clean now if you do have uh, issues you know you might have fungus or you might have uh, you know some hay something going on you may need to clean clean the lenses and give it a good soaking in uh, like hydrogen peroxide or um, isopropyl alcohol things like that for a clean so same thing pop, pop that in and again these lenses are kind of tough you know they're not delicate not like the uh, old vintage um, lenses where they were very soft and whatnot you have to be very gentle with these these ones are pretty tough I mean you can bump them around obviously you don't want to scratch them or anything else but um, you just want to make sure that uh, everything looks good uh hold on that just holding this up to the light i see a little uh a little something in there that probably needs a little cleaning so let me uh yeah there's some spots on there let me get rid of that get rid of that we don't want any spots on that yeah there's little smudges of something that was on there who knows what that could be you know again with older older lenses who knows what's in the uh, <laughs> what's been lurking in the uh, in the glass or beneath the glass so all right get that seated uh, it looks much better now I get the retainer ring put that in or the face plate I should say get that in there and again you can you can do this by hand uh, just to get it get it going anyway um, screw that in in place um, get it turning of course with like as with any thread got to make sure the thread is actually going to catch properly which is not always an easy thing uh, remember turn it to the right Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Remember that rule. Um, so get that going. Once it's once it's threaded, once the thread catches, then you can use your tool to uh, to get it tightened from there. Oh, I forgot I adjusted it for the bottom uh, bottom thread. So let me adjust it back out again here in place and. Of course, once you have it locked in, it's just a matter of turning, turning until, until the face plate is seated properly and relatively. You don't have to tighten it, obviously, it's for, so you can't get it off again, but you want to tighten it up so it's not going to fall out. All right, so there we have it. There we have my, uh, my Helios 44-2. As you can see, uh, you may or may not see uh, in that regard, but... The, uh, you know, the aperture blade is now free of shiny oil and uh, that's what we want. So let me give you some sample pictures of that to show, uh, show you what the, uh, what the lens can do. So let's get, let's get that going. Actually, I'll probably use Dylan, my son, as a, as a model as I usually do. So let's get some uh, pictures of Dylan. So I'll be back in a second.
All right, so we're back in the chair, back away from the table. Here we are with a nice spiffy new, it's not new, but like new, uh, clean Helios 44-2. Um, you know, and again, it wasn't that, wasn't that hard, it took a little time, but you know, this is uh, modesty photography, right? Uh, all about saving you money showing you tips on uh, photography and just really how to do things yourself. Uh, whew, almost dropped it. <laughs> you, may, uh, you may enjoy doing yourself kind of things, but the benefit of it though is it saves you money. And that's, you know, who could complain about that, right? Um, saving you money is, uh, um, you know, one of the reasons why I'm here doing what I do, you know, to teach you uh, how to do these things yourself. So, again, this was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. And, uh, you know, I'd really appreciate if you could, uh, if you're not subscribed already, support my channel. Uh, give me a subscribe and maybe a, a subscribe and tell your friends, you know, help out Dr. Scott and subscribe. Uh, and since the uh, YouTube um, algorithm likes likes uh, like thumbs up kind of thing, so give me a thumbs up, so I can show you the thumbs up, girls. Wink, wink. And lastly, my little plug for Luminar because that's the software. Um, that I use for my photo editing. I almost said software editing. You know, I have a habit of doing that. But anyway, Luminar is the, uh, the software that I use for my photo editing, uh, which I recommend. You know, a lot of great pictures come straight out of camera the way they are, but eh, a lot of your photos could also help a little, whether it's composition, you know, doing some cropping here and there or straightening whether it's color might be a little off, the, the white balance could be off, could be, you know, you could stand for a little sharpening maybe, or a little softening if you're sharp, if your photos are too sharp, especially with portraits, and especially with girls, they don't want to see, uh, you know, a little skin blemish here and there. So, um, you know, the editing may be beneficial to you and your subjects. So anyway, Luminar is what I use, and if you want a good deal on Luminar, it's uh, a lot cheaper than, than Lightroom and uh, Photoshop and whatnot. So click below, you'll save $10. It helps me a little bit, get a little here and there out of that. Uh, but if you don't want to help Dr. Scott, that's fine too. Just go to Luminar and, uh, and hook yourself up with, uh, with the program, but you'll pay $10 more for it by doing it yourself. So anyway, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for uh, watching me uh, clean up the oil on my aperture blades and hopefully you can do the same with your own uh, oil problems or things that are going on in your, uh, in your lens. So anyway, come on back next week. We'll look at something else. We'll uh, do a little introduction to you know, something maybe we haven't talked about yet. So again, thanks for the support. Thanks for dropping by and we'll see you next week. All right. This was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Here I am to be a man. The rain is always good.